Okay, I'm going to move on to when Borg Warner closed. I know you weren't there when it did, but I think some of these questions might relate a little bit. Um, how did you feel when it was announced that Borg Warner would close? I felt sad because I knew it was going to affect a lot of people. Um, the numbers started dwindling down. See, it was 2,700 employees when I was there. So I'm not quite sure what the numbers were at the time the plant closed, but I knew they had started laying people off. <clears throat> but those few hundred people that were there, it was devastating to the people, to the community. I mean, look at the, the money, the impact of the income. And then we had other factories that were already closing, so it, it was kind of devastating to, to lose another plant like that. Do you see any other impacts in the community other than the money aspect or? Well, yeah, the growth, because a lot of people had to leave. They left Muncie. They went to other places to find work. They left the state. Some of them left the state altogether. So not only, you know, the impact on the economy, but just the population was impacted. Um, and then your schools, once you move out, you, the kids are gone. So the schools started dwindling. Right. And then they start, then the schools get in this mess. You know, we're not, we don't have as many kids here, so we got to start combining schools and closing schools. So yeah, there was, there was an impact. Do you feel it had any impact on you, like just within your, I know you'd been gone already by that point, but you talked about having other family members that might have worked there too. All my family members that were there at that time uh, had been, are gone. Like I said, my, my husband and mother, they left. My brother was gone. But I had cousins that were there that, uh, yeah, that it impacted them because a lot of people didn't have any other skills. That's the thing. That's all they knew. That's all they knew. And they had to go back to school. So some people had to go back to training. In fact, I'm thinking I heard it had to be a requirement that some of them had to do some training in order to, I don't know, they were getting unemployment or um, to get recommended for other jobs. That's what I'm hearing. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know. Maybe when you talk to them, you'll find out. But I know a lot of them had to learn new skills. And if you've been there 20 years plus, that's kind of hard to go back to school and do. So that would be a burden on anybody is trying to learn a new skill to try to get hired at a new job when jobs like that weren't around anymore. Things started going technical, um, uh, technology, you know, computers, and we, then the young people were jumping on those. The older people, it was getting hard for them to find. So then we, I started seeing them cashier, um, doing, you know, other little custodial jobs. You know, just finding whatever they can find to make ends meet. Fast food places, things like that. Um, I know you've talked a little bit about what you've done since you left Borg Warner. Could you go into a little bit more detail or? Well, when I first left there, I, I went to real estate school and got my real estate license and started working for a couple of the local real estate companies around here, which was good because I was able to help the people again that I knew. And, and it was fine because even my own people, the blacks, <laughs> would come to me for help. I mean, how do I do this? How do I do that? And uh, I even ran across a few people that worked at Borg Warner selling their house. I had to help them. And then it, it was kind of good to help people to buy houses, too. But I did that for a little while. And then um, I decided, well, let me go to, out to Ball State. So I went out there and applied. And I got a temporary job, and I was a floater, so I worked in several areas to fill in for secretaries, off sick, or whatever. And then an opening came up in the athletic department, and I applied for that and got it, and hired in. And I spent most of my time, 19 years, 
in the athletic department working for the football coaches. I spent 19 years doing that. But in total, I got my degree while I was at Ball State working. I got my social work degree. Um, and uh, I spent 25 years there and just retired in July of 2017. So I'm a retiree now. <laughs> Um, if you don't mind my asking, what led you to real estate? Was there some aspect about it that you wanted to pursue or something uh, from Borg Warner that like okay, nothing was nothing really. Uh, I'd just been talking to different people and they were like, Oh, you ought to try real estate, you ought to come and one night in fact one night I was sitting and watching T V and a commercial came on and it was the Bill Miller School of Real Estate commercial and I called him and they were having a uh, class start up at Ivy Tech here in Muncie at that particular time. It was going to be like two weeks away and I signed up for it and went to that school. I had just heard people talking about it and I, then a commercial came. I said, well, it must be destined for me to try real estate. So I just did it, nothing particular. And I think I did that for about seven years. Yeah, I did real estate for seven. In fact, I still hold a real estate license through the state, but I don't do anything locally. Okay. Yeah, I can do referrals, and that's about it. Okay. Um, so since it's been 10 years since the factory closed, that was 2009, this is 2019. Um, is this something that you still reflect on? Does your time at Board Warner still affect you? <sighs> Not as much. I just know that when I ride down 32 and I see it leveled, it's and what really hurt me was when I rode by and I saw the crumbling before. Right now it's all level, but when I seen it in bricks, you know, I'd ride by and took my grandkids. I said, Grandma used to work there. That was my building right in there. I worked in that office. And I think that office area was one of the last areas for them to take down, but it was kind of hard to ride by and see that because I can reflect oh, in that part of the building, this is, that was there, and over here was this, and the cafeteria was here, and, you know, the one entrance was there. So it was kind of neat to reflect on that part of it. Does it make yeah. you sad? Well, I'm more or less sad for the job loss in the community. That's what I'm more sad for. The young kids, there's so much drugs and violence and you know, around town and guys and women too, uh, child abuse and neglect. And I don't even know if have, having those jobs out there would even help that. I don't know. Our society is in such a mess, but I'm wondering if the jobs were there, if that would make a difference. You know, people would have some place to go, something to do. We don't have the jobs around here. I'm sure, I'm sure, you know, the fast food jobs, you see signs, you could ride down McGuire now hiring, help want it. But if those other jobs like that was still there, would it make a difference? Could. You never know. Yeah, you, know? you never know. <laughs> um, are you still in contact with the people that you worked with in the admin area in the office? No, all the people I worked with are... The immediate people I worked in the employment office are all dead. Oh, no. Yes, they are. I mean, they are. Yeah, they're they're all gone. I think there's one that's still left, but I don't know where he went to. But there's, every once in a while, I'll run across a person somewhere, and I'll be like, oh, you know, we'll start talking. But as far as physically reaching out to find somebody? No. I'll run into more of the factory people somewhere than anything else. And every time I do run into them, they always thank me, you know. Oh, thank you, Mar Miss Marlene. You were such a, you know, good person. And, you know, I still enjoy that. I still enjoy the thank yous. And you did a lot for us and appreciate what all you did. And I'll run into people. But as far as reaching out to someone, no. I do know they have a reunion once a year in October at the Pizza King. Now, I don't know if that's everybody invited or just a bunch of women that get together, but I know that that happens, and that's 
always a nice thing for people to keep in touch. And I think Borg Warner's got a website, web page, or, uh, or a Facebook page, yeah. They were having picnics, I think, out at Morrow's Meadows out in Yorktown a few years back. They even had a get-together there. So, um, and I'm sure a lot of the factory people bonded real good, and they keep in touch with, you, with each other. But, uh, yeah, with social media the way it is, it's probably not hard to find anybody. It's not hard to find. It's, getting, it's hard getting people getting, to agree. That's to the get thing. Out here. I understand. <laughs> I will say before we get to our next. <laughs> what I'm right feels like. All right, I'm gonna move um, just a little bit to the community um, aspects <clears throat> of Borg Warner. Um, so when Borg Warner is open from Muncie's side, was it was there a feeling that it was important to Muncie that Borg Warner was in the community? Did they did people like having Borg Warner in the community? Of course. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, they the were the longest running factory here because we lost Westinghouse back in the day. We had Chevrolet. We had those factories here. So when Borg Warner was still gone, they were gone. So the community was very happy that Borg Warner hung on as long as it did. Yeah. And do you remember any of the community reaction to when Borger Warner closed? I mean, outside of the people who worked there. No, I'm sure there's some newspaper articles about that if you go back and research. But, you know, just in passing, talking to a few people here and there, um, you know, they said that it, they'll be missed. That's basically the reaction. Once I left, I left. You left? Yeah. Because of the way I left. You know, I hated that, but it was like, you know, that's on them. I don't care anymore. And that's that was my feeling. I, I was glad that it was still there for the people, that people still had a paycheck, and they could still support their family. But as far as me and management, I was bitter, you know? I was really bitter about that, because I worked so hard for them all those years, and I wasn't getting paid good. I mean, good, but not right, like I should have been. I had to question them and fight them on that. And then when I wanted the job, they would always, oh, well, we'll give you a raise, but we won't give you the title. And I'm doing all the work. And that's how it was for, you know, the typical black person in any job, I think. You know, they would never, you had to do the work, but they never give you the recognition. And I didn't like that, and I wasn't going to be a part of it anymore, so I left. Okay. I feel like we may have touched on this next one, but if you have anything to add, go ahead. Um, can you tell me some of the differences you see in Muncie then when Borg Warner was a huge presence here, and, and then now when it's not, you know, it's been 10 years later? Mm, the differences? Yeah, kind of some of the differences in the Muncie community. Like you mentioned, the there was an economic impact, and there was the population, if there was anything. Well... Going back to the fact that job security, jobs, just jobs in general, and and like I was touching on the drugs, you know, that there's just so much of that now, and there's so much child neglect and so much abuse, and I'm just wondering if we still had those jobs here, if people were able to work, you know, in a decent job and have insurance where they could really support their families and get them into medical care and you know I, I, I volunteer with a, an organization we help kids with their homework in the evenings and some of the kids that come there some of the things that I hear you know people's families aren't stable anymore family life is just terrible in some situations I don't know if it would help the drug e epidemic here, but it could have. And that's what I, I hate about the fact that they're gone. They were here the longest and they stuck it out, and, and I'm glad for that. But since they've been gone, it just seems like families, the breakdown in the family situation has really gotten worse. Mm -hmm. That's what I think. 
do you feel like there's no job security in Muncie? Because that was what you were first kind of going towards. Mm -hmm. So do you fe do you feel like there is no job security? <sighs> there's a little now, not as much. There's some some pop up places. I think we've got Progress Rail now out there. Magna is here now. That's a spin off of Borg Warner. That's that's a spin off. Uh, in fact, I think one of the employees from Borg Warner got Magna started. I think that's how that got started up. We've got uh, industrial park out here by the airport. There's a couple little factories, different places like that. But now there's technology. I mean, everything's computerized. You know, that's where your job securities, I guess, is at. And some of these factories, I'm sure they got robots. Robotics. We, yeah. I, I started seeing that at Borg Warner. A little bit of robot, and that was kind of difficult for some employees because they were so old school. They came in there. We've even had people that couldn't read and write, you know, but they knew how to run their job because it was repetitive, always the same thing. But then when the robots came, they couldn't do it. So. Um, yeah, job security can be there if the training is there and I th work one is good at, you know, trying to reach out to people and helping them get that. But um, I don't know where, where the loss is. We've got to help the kids at a younger, younger base. we got to get them more interested in training for skilled jobs that can, they can be stable with some sort of job security that they could train early and stay and stick with. And that's what we got to have here in Muncie, something that's sustainable, that'll stay, and you know it's going to be here. We can't have something that's going to, oh, I'm going to work three or four years and then it's gone. So we've got to make sure, I mean, the community has to have something stable. And, and I hope Magna, Progress Rail, <clears throat> Ken, I think, is one out there. I can't remember. Yeah. But I just hope these places can just stay around long enough to try to, you know, reach the people. And I hope we can attract more businesses. It sounds almost as if you, you, that you think education is very important here and maybe Muncie should focus more on education. Education is important and training. But we've got to see... You've got to train the kids for what's here if they plan on staying in this community, but you've also got to train them for whatever else is out there. And like I said, technology is the thing now. And if we can't attract technical businesses or businesses that are long-term business that's going to stay here, the kids aren't going to stay here. They're not going to stay. So we need to find some way to attract businesses that are committed to the community to stay here. And then if the kids know that there's a business that's going to be here to stay, then they can get the education and the training they need to go into those businesses and to stay in the community, put more money back into the community. And it's just one of those circle evolving things. Do you see programs like that around or not yet? I think maybe it's coming slowly, but I'd have to do more research to see where, you know, maybe Ball State might have some research. I don't know. I just wish it would happen. <laughs> um, what do you think about the economic future of Muncie? Do you, where do you think we're going? Right now, I think we're just kind of in a holding pattern. Um, again, if the companies that are here now could just stabilize, stay there for a while, increase their numbers, and reach out and try to find something else to keep us solid, I think we'll do okay. I think we'll do okay. I'm just more concerned about the, the family breakups and the divisions and kids and child abuse and neglect and stuff and I don't know if it's, it's because the parents don't have anything to look forward to 
so they resort to drugs and all that. And I think a lot of that is based on no jobs. Okay. Um, last question, <laughs> Lisa, that I can think of right now. Um, have you heard of the new development plans for the old Bork Warner site? I heard there's supposed to be something, but and, and there might have been an article in the paper, some company buying it, mm -hmm. bought the land. I don't know what they're going to do. Um, it's called Zinc National, and there's another company that's involved, and they're building on the site to make this um, raw material for kind of technology purposes. Um, I think they're going to hire up to 90 people, so they're not going to use the whole site, um, but they but there there are plans in development for it. Um, Good. So what do you think about it? <laughs> I think it's great. Yeah. Anything we can get. Um, like I said, some companies, like that wind thing out there, I don't know, whatever, they said they were going to hire people, and that fell through. I mean, it's great if it works. We need something. 90 people is a start, you know. They do want to expand. Yeah, mm -hmm. that gets up and going and works. I'm all for it. I love it. Did you have anything else you want to add? <sighs> no, other than... Not really. You've asked a lot of questions. Some things, you know, it starts bringing back the whole Borg Warner, Warner Gear thing. Um, I did enjoy my time there. Made some friends, like I said. Um, it was good in the pocket <laughs> as far as money, benefits. I was able to buy a home, get my cars, feed my kids. Um, you know, it, it was nice. And, and I got education myself and training and learned some things along the way. Because, like, like I said, I got hired in 74. I was old school. So for me, going from a typewriter and then learning how to use a computer, that was great progress for me. You know, I learned a lot that working there. Um, and it was good for the community and the people. I hate that it left. But maybe something else will come along and will do good. Okay. I really can't think of anything else. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we can stop there. That's okay. fine. I really appreciate your time. Right. You had some good things to say. Thank you. I think anyway. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Oh, my god. And goodness. then if you find anything, You know, please... I may have some stuff. Yeah. I've got a, I remember, I remember a box. I just have to look. Okay. I'll go up in my attic and stuff. Same way when I left Ball State, I put together a little box of stuff. But yeah. Did you have any questions? I didn't. Okay, because <laughs> she was right, and I'm thinking, like, what, what is she doing over <laughs> She's there? She's got to pull another sheet for you.